yourself. Yeah, thank you so much. So Lola Albright, but you could have Lola Albright Thomas? No, or? that's incorrect. It's Lola Thomas hyphen Albright. Okay, Lola Thomas hyphen Albright. Yes. <laughs> so um, is Thomas then your maiden name? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. You liked the hyphen. Well, my sister and I are married to first cousins, so to de- decipher between our children, oh, I'm hyphenated. Oh, okay. Yes, we both are Albrights. <laughs> Aw, that is, that's a pretty name. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, excited to talk about your experience at the White House. Yes. Um, and it, it started even before you got to the White House. It started by um, Secretary Pete. That's uh, correct. Yeah. Yes, yes. So how did he even come in contact with you? Mitch reached out to me after I finished Certified Red. I had my ceremony. He called me that Monday and was saying that he was notified that Secretary Pete was interested in dri- ri- having a ride along with a female driver. Okay. And if they knew anyone, and he thought that I would be the perfect person oh. to do the ride along and would I be willing. So okay. After I realized that he wasn't joking, I was like, <laughs> I was like, sure, I'll do it. And so we did. I came in that Friday. You know, I couldn't tell anybody except my husband. So I came in with Mitch and we did a Zoom uh-huh. with Secretary Pete's assistant. Wow. And we talked about the ride along and the questions I wanted to ask versus the questions he wanted to ask and what all was going to be entailed. Wow. And then that Saturday, I came, got the Heartlands uh, drive in mm-hmm. and went up to the rest area in Goodfield and met. Secretary Pete, but before then I had met the secretary, the, his Secret Service and his staff and administration. So yeah, yeah so. I remember seeing some of those pictures and seeing the Secret Service in the background, yes. and it looks like a movie. Yes, <laughs> and it was n- really nervous because when I was driving, my curtains was closed because there was actually a Secret Service sitting on my bed. That's what, and they was like, well, we need you to close the curtains because it'd be odd for a man just to be sitting on your bed not saying anything. Oh no! So that's why the curtains are closed. It's because someone is actually sitting back there. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh wow! Yeah, and if anyone does know Mitch, he's a he's a pretty serious guy. Right. So to have an email from him saying that, I could see how the little sh- kind of shocking. Well, when he called, I almost didn't answer because I'm like, okay, it's a safety. So what did I do wrong? Let me think. <laughs> you know, because you know, I always tell him safety has no good news for us. <laughs> so, but when I was called, I was really honored and yeah. that he thought of me. Yeah. yeah so. Wow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, going back even a little bit further, I'd love to just hear about, um, yeah, why you wanted to become a truck driver and just that specific story. I've always liked to drive. I mean, even when my husband and I would take the kids on road trips or vacations, I was always the one wanting to do the driving. So it's always been a dream of mine to be a truck driver. Yeah. But having six children and little, we -hmm. just agreed that we would wait till they all finished high school and then I could go into trucking. So yeah. That's what we did. I went into nursing instead because I've always liked to help. And so I felt nursing gave me that opportunity. It's just like I feel like trucking gives me that opportunity Mm. to give something better, you know, greater than myself. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So you were a nurse for how many years? 17. I did. My my original nurse, I started at was Fairview Haven and Fairbury. That was my first nursing job. We lived on Fifth Avenue. Or Fifth Street, across from the old hospital. Yeah, and that was Brett Newsbaum's neighborhood. Too, yeah, huh? th- three houses down. <laughs> <laughs> As we got to talk, and we realized we lived three houses from each other. But so I did that for five and a half years, and then I went to Shenoa and worked at a nursing home, mm. and then I went into hospice. Okay. So I worked for St. Francis and Peoria. Oh. You know that was the headquarters, but my patients were everywhere. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So I did that. So you'd work with them in their homes? Right. Wherever they are, nursing homes, assistant living, in their homes. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. Yeah, in the hospital if they needed care in the hospital. So okay. wherever they were. So, and I really enjoyed that. You know, mm-hmm. being, Some of those cases were heartbreaking, but the majority yeah. of them was really rewarding to be with someone at the end of Aww. life while they make the transition yeah. and keeping them comfortable. Yeah. And then um, my son was graduating. Our youngest son was graduating in 2020. Okay. So I was like, okay, in five years, I'm going to become a truck driver. So I went and drove school buses. I left the nursing field 
and I went to drive, got my class B, started driving school buses mm-hmm. to get used to a commercial vehicle. Mm-hmm. And that's how I became a school bus driver. Aww. So, and then he got his license in 2019 and didn't need me anymore at home because he could drive himself and he had a vehicle. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I knew some drivers from the busing company that came over here and they were bragging about Newsbomb. Aww. I was like, well, let me look at them again. I had looked at, you know, a couple of companies mm-hmm. and then I came and applied and did my three interviews and... I'm here. <laughs> so, yeah. um, as a as a bus driver, did you get to build relationships with the kids? Did, I had the same route, the same children for the five years. Nobody, when I started, nobody wanted the bus that I had. But the, most of the kids went to the same school my children went to, and I knew their parents. Oh. So I was able to have a better rapport with them and their parents because I would see them at a football game. I'm like, okay, you know, <laughs> you know, we have video cameras, so you could always call and watch what your children are doing on the bus. Because oh. we had cameras inside the bus yeah, as well. I remember that. Right, with the mm-hmm. audio. So it was good to have them for the, fi- you know, for the five years that I was there. I had wow. the same children. So and, all, and my seniors all was graduating in 2020, like my son. So. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that is special. Yeah. So after that senior class is when you then went into trucking. trucking. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. so you went th- through Heartland? Yes, I went through Heartland. I had okay. Dave Klein as my instructor. Yeah. did my manuals because I didn't want a restriction on my license. So yeah. I did a manual. And it was difficult. I wouldn't re- recommend anybody doing it two months after knee surgery, but oh. I did it. Oh. <laughs> I had knee surgery and ended up starting CDL school. Yeah. So, Whew. yeah. So that was my therapy on top of therapy. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. And then who was your trainer here? Oh, I had several. Okay. <laughs> I had uh, Maya for the first two weeks and then she was coming into the office. Mm-hmm. Then I switched over to Darla. Then I had Adrian and I had AJ. Wow. So. Yeah, it's a handful. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so it's been how many years now that you've been at New Spawn? Two and a half. It'll be three years in October. Okay. Yes. That's so special. It seems like forever. But <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I think you were telling me this before, but does your husband just work down the street? Yes. Yeah, he's the general manager of Neil Tire and Otto of okay. Hershey. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so sometimes you actually pull into that facility and you, you meet him? Yeah, I meet Crazy. him for lunch or yes. Or uh-huh. I just go in and blow my air horn. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah. That's so sweet. Um, so back to, yeah, the story with Pete. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was kind of on this email chain where I was confused because, yeah, you kept emailing Mitch these pictures and talking about it. And I was like, wow, she's got a good relationship <laughs> with Mitch. But was there something you you did, you like said incorrect about like fluid or something? I said brake fluid uh-huh. instead of um, power steering. Okay. And when I realized it, I was like, OK, he didn't say anything. So do I correct myself and make it seem like he didn't know or that I didn't know? <laughs> so I just went with because it was no retake. It was li- it, what was said was like there was no yeah. editing or anything on the spot. Wow. So afterwards, we laughed about it because he said he picked up on it, but he didn't want to point it out because I had, you know, I had said everything else correctly. So I was like, okay, I didn't think you realized it. So <laughs> that was a moment that we kind of laughed together about. Yes. Yeah. But it was just being nervous because I had so many people around. It wasn't the fact I didn't know. Yeah. It's just the nervousness and talking so fast because they wanted the pre-trip and see it. But because he got delayed and was talking to other people, my 20 minute presentation on how we thoroughly do a pre-trip they said can you do it in 10 and I was like sure (laughs) so I'm trying to run and you know make sure I can couple and everything yeah because he was really more interested in the ride along and finding out the pros and cons of being on the road versus the Mm -hmm. pre-trip that was just the added bonus yeah so so what was their main intent of meeting you and like are they after like changing some like laws or restrictions or or what what is it they're trying to bring more women and veterans into the trucking industry and so they was trying to find out from a woman that's new into the industry what are some of the pros and some of the cons of the trucking industry and so that's what I was sharing with him and some of my challenges that I faced you know especially with the pandemic Mm -hmm. and not having access to restaurants or you know restrooms even though I do all my cooking Mm -hmm. in my truck but you do see truckers that go in and upset because the restaurant Restaurants are closed or mm. have been closed since the pandemic. Or you go to a customer and you're there two, three hours, but they only have an outhouse or nothing. 
So you you know you're trying uh-huh. to be creative and using the restroom. So yeah. So, and he so he was really interested in talking about that. And it wasn't just talking. He was sharing some ideas. Like I just heard that Pennsylvania mm-hmm. passed a law that customers have to let truck drivers use their restrooms. So I was okay. and that was one of the things we talked about in Washington when I was there. Okay. And he said that he was going to see about trying to implement. So I was glad to see some of the things we talked about. Yeah. That he's really trying to do. Wow. You know, and it was refreshing because we didn't talk about politics or what party affiliation I, I'm from or yeah. anything like that. It was more, he was concerned about how can he help our job oh. make and make it better and safer yeah. for everyone. So wow. I really respected that. Mm-hmm. Yes. So that was the ride along. Yes. And then did you have any idea that what shortly after you would get invited to the White House? No, he told me if I ever had any more ideas to reach out and let them know. And I was like, okay. And, you know, and I had shared about even training because they want to make a policies about sexual harassment and trainers. Okay. And I said, you could have as many policies as we want, but if they're not implemented mm-hmm. or follow through, what is a policy? It's just on paper. Mm-hmm. I was like, to me, because I work for a company that has cameras, I just feel like every trainer should have a camera and their truck. Mm-hmm. I said, that protects the trainer and the trainee from anything being said or done inappropriately. Mm-hmm. So he's, they're looking into trying to... Yeah. Implement that. So he was like, okay, well, if you have any other good ideas, you know, reach out and call me. I'm like, okay, I will. And so when I got the voicemail sitting in trainer to train, trainer, I was like, this is not, this is April. It was on April 1st. I'm like, this is April Fool's joke. And I listened to it again. I know his voice. So when I called, they, yeah. It was him. It was he him. picked up. Yeah. I have their numbers. So I know when Washington's calling because I have the numbers. Wow. So, I, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So how long you had the ride along and then it was like a week or two that he called for the White House visit? Or? No, I had the ride along in February. It was the second week in February. Uh-huh. And then he called last, what was it? This is April. So March, the end or, of March, March 29th, March 30th. Okay. Wanted me in the, at the White House that Monday. So he called me on a Thursday. And wanted and, you there on a Monday. On a Monday. And they were going to fly me out on Sunday. So... It happened extremely fast. Yeah. 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 Was there any hesitancy that um, maybe you didn't want to go because it was so last minute or just? The only hesitant I had was I had, I knew I had a trainee that was supposed to be starting that Monday and Mm -hmm. I didn't want to take away from her training. So I was hesitant on that aspect. Like, do I go or do I stay and start the training? So I just reached out and talked to some people to make sure Mm -hmm. that, and so it it, luckily it worked out. So we was able to go. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, and so you didn't go by yourself, though. You went with um, Lola Ann. He right? requested Lola Ann to come with me okay. when I called because I talked about her on the truck and doing mm-hmm. e-learning when the pandemic hit. So he wanted to meet her. And, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. So you had her for a whole year doing e-learning? Yes, because my daughter was a manager over at AFNI at the time. And so okay. she couldn't leave. And Unit 5 had started e-learning like mm-hmm. overnight, basically. So I just put her on the truck with me with her tablet, and she did e-learning from the truck the whole year. So during that time, she went to 31 states with me. So, oh. And we have a picture with her in every state. So oh. I made sure we was able to stop so she yeah. could have that memory. That is uh, so sweet. Yeah. Like, did you take it in front of, like, all the state signs? Most, or? most of them were in front of the state signs, or if we stopped at the Welcome Center, the, with the sign, yes, but she has them all with the sign. So at she, eight years old, at eight thirty-one years. states. Yeah, and she loved Montana because she likes bubblegum ice cream. But Illinois only has pink bubblegum ice cream, and they're chipped. So Montana has blue with real bubblegum in it. So she wants her mom to move there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, eight-year-old mind. You know, <laughs> so yeah, it was an incredible experience to have to share with her. So, but wow. even then, like that, it was challenging because there's no restrooms and stuff. So oh. trying to stop. Yeah. 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 Wow. Mm. So, yeah, that must have been, I feel like that could be a storybook. Yeah. Of just <laughs> yeah. a year in 31 states. And yeah. It was incredible. Every morning before her class started e-learning, her teacher would ask what state she was in. So it was, oh. so they got to go with the journey with her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, and then her next adventure was the White House. Right, the White House, yes. And um, you you sent a picture. She was in, like, the, the cockpit with the pilots. Yes. 
That wasn't like during the flight, it was after? Or? No, that was before the flight okay. because before they took off, they announced our names over the PA on the plane. Mm -hmm. And they, of course they butchered my government name up. <laughs> and so after they found out how to pronounce it, they said they had instruction from the pilot that they weren't supposed to leave without us. Uh, and so we have everybody looking around like, why? And they said, and your granddaughter's first time on a plane, so the pilots want her to come up front so they could tell her how they run the pilot, you know, the plane and what their procedures are and meet her. And that's wow. how she ended up in the cockpit. Well, I never got that experience. <laughs> me either. I mean, they didn't have me in the cockpit, but yes. They, so, yeah, they, and so they gave her a little certificate she has at home that said, let the adventure begin. And everybody on the plane signed it for her. So. Oh. Yeah, it made a scary moment for her very rewarding. Oh, because yeah. she was scared of That was her first flight. She had never oh. been on a plane before, so, mm. so she was real nervous. And the White House knew that, so they was trying to make sure that she was at ease before we went up in the air. <laughs> so um, they flew you, was it, was it first class? Like? Well, we supposed to have regular, but they b bumped us up to first class, so uh, we ended up having first class. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you got there, just stayed in a hotel. Just, yeah, tell me about that experience. They arranged for our hotel. They told us we stayed at the Marriott Capitol Hill Navy which is two mi two minutes from the uh, Department of Transportation headquarters and five ten minutes from the White House. Mm -hmm. So they had us have transportation. We had an Uber from the airport to the hotel. Um, we had a suite, and then we went out that day. We got in. We saw all the monument uh, monuments and went by the White House. And then that morning, one of the aides from Secretary Pete met us at the hotel with the car that was taking us to the White House. Wow. So. So we, it was an incredible experience. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe this is just a girl question, but how did you figure out what you were going to wear? <laughs> I asked. I'm a, I, if I don't know, I'm going to ask a thousand questions. So yeah. as we was you know, emailing and making sure that all the arrangements was, I was like, okay, so how should we dress? And it's like business. I was like, oh, perfect. I know exactly. And then I watched press conference. I mean, you see that they don't wear loud colors. And I've heard social media really cool people from loud colors are showing too much. So I, uh, I kind of based it off okay. of that. Okay. Yeah. Because you look sharp. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I have to get my husband dressed us. <laughs> <laughs> and my husband dressed us. Uh, yeah. Like you just, yeah. And everyone asks, well, do you think you want to go into politics? That's like, no, because my face tells you what I'm thinking before I say it. Uh, so I'm not. But you had the sunglasses on. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. It was a nice poker yeah. face. <laughs> um, other than like sitting at the press conference, did you have opportunity to like maybe have dinner or something with Pete? Or? Well, what they did, they brought us to the White House at 1050 in the morning. Actually, we got there a little early, but it was supposed to be 1050. They gave us a tour. We saw the entire White House. My granddaughter was able to sit in the chair that the president does if he goes to the White House doctor's office. So she sat there. We have pictures of her there. We, um, she sat at Vice President Harris's desk and we took pictures throughout there. We went to the war room. So, and then we had lunch. What's the war room? That's where they do the strategies about anything that's going to, like when President Obama was sitting in the war room, when Os Osama bin Laden was getting, we went to that room. Wow. And, and so we was able to take pictures. And I have a picture of my granddaughter peeping around the door before we went in. So, <laughs> yeah, so we saw the whole White House. We um, saw the um, motorcades, the Secret Service vehicles. Did you get to like shake hands with anyone in the Secret Service or they don't Everyone, do yeah, oh yeah. They, well, well for her, they were shaking her hand and trying to make her warm, but yeah. She kept saying, I know why they call them Secret Service. I said, why? She said, cause you don't know who's who. So <laughs> it was- Cause they all just look- They all look the they, same. Are they all wearing sunglasses all the time? Or? No, they, I mean, some of them are wearing the um, bulletproof vest that says Secret Service on them, but then some of them are in regular clothes. I mean, you just don't know who you're standing next to. So. Oh. And then we met a, a representative from Philadelphia that, um, rep, what's his name, Representative Murphy. So she, we talked to him a lot and yeah, we met, met a lot of people from, and had lunch downstairs in the cafeteria. And, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So at that um, press conference, was there certain initiatives that they were besides like, you know, the bathroom situation and um, like they're, they're trying the pilot program, right, for the 18-year-olds right, to, right. to start driving. But anything, any other 
um, new interesting information? No, just the pilot. They try to get, like I said, more women, more veterans, get the pilot program, you know, up and running. I think they said right now they have 100 companies that have signed up for that, you know, pilot program. So trying to get that running and having the states, you know, Mm -hmm. implement that because they said that they're running into obstacles of companies are hiring people, but they're not able to get them through or can't get them across state lines. So they're trying to work with the states to see Mm -hmm. where the, you know, red tape is and what they could do to help. Yeah. 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 In regards to um, more women entering the industry, Mm -hmm. what what kind of advice would you have um, for, yeah, someone that is going to be a brand new going into over the road trucking just doing their own research you know everyone has a different experience my experience here could be different to someone else's experience mm-hmm. here so just doing your own research knowing what you are willing to you know compromise on and what you're not willing to compromise on yeah and you know standing true to that you know I, I had 10 things I wasn't willing to compromise on when I was okay. looking at companies and as I looked if the company didn't meet them I just crossed them out wow. no matter what someone else said about the company so mm-hmm. just making sure that, that company fits you yeah yeah as would, well as you fit that company yeah would you share a few of those um, um safety was one you know how did they protect women out on the road did mm-hmm. we have um paid parking you know are you it's forced dispatch but how forced are you if mm-hmm. i call in and say i don't feel safe to run because the weather is bad are you gonna still make me run mm-hmm. anyway uh detention was a big thing am i sitting not getting paid or how soon do I get paid for detention mm-hmm. overnight you know breakdown a lot of companies you got to be out exactly 24 hours before they give you breakdown pay oh. so I'm sitting for 24 hours with no pay I, that's not something I'm willing to do yeah I didn't want to do um, zip code to zip code mm-hmm. because I, or you know or just mallets you know yeah or customer cars I wanted you know like we do door to door yeah and yeah so it was yeah so it's like wow. but you know how often am I getting home because yeah. even though my, my my children are grown. I have, you know, grandchildren. I'm still involved with my children. I have a husband at home. Yeah. So I didn't want to be out, you know, two, three, four months at a time. Yeah. You know, I wanted to, you know, be home as often as possible. Mm. And, you know, and then also being with a company that if I put a request in, they not denying it or making it hard for me to get back home. Yeah. You know, because once I'm out on the road, I'm out on the road to do a job. Yeah. But then when I want to come home, I want to come home. Yeah. And I don't want to have to fight to get home. Mm-hmm. So that was a lot of... Wow. And the training, I wanted to, you know, be trained thoroughly. Yeah. Because I've seen the videos and heard the testimonies of people who've had a week of training, and I wasn't looking for that. Ooh. You know. Yeah. You know, I didn't really like the six months training because I was, you know, once you go back out on your own and you come back in somebody else's house, it was hard to adapt. But I appreciate it because it made, I feel like it made me a better trainer, even with all the trainers I had. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, it helped me yeah. be a better trainer. Wow. So you just gleaned all this from just like research online. Did you ha- did you have friends that were in the trucking industry? How did you? No, my son, my not my son, my brother, my youngest brother. He is a trucker, and he's been one for twenty years, and he's an owner operator. Oh, and I just okay. used, his name is on the side of his truck, and I just was like, oh man, that's just so cool. I want to do that, and yeah, that. So that's the only truck. I just do a lot of research. I like to research. I like to read. I like to ask a whole lot of questions. So before I do anything, I have all the information. Mm that I need, you wow. know, to make the best decision for me and my family. Yeah. And that's what I tell people when they reach out to me is you have to make the best decision for you and your family. Mm. You know, I can only tell you my experience. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. You yeah. make me want to, like, start researching more. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> and that's why when my fa- my friends found out I was coming in a truck, it, it kind of surprised them because the year before I had just graduated again from college with my business management and event planning degree. And it's like, well, how does trucking fit into that? And I'm like, well, because I'm trying to get myself financially stabled and mm-hmm. I want to be able to leave something for my grandchildren. And trucking was that avenue for me wow. so, to be able to do that. Yeah. So, so do you plan on doing anything specific with that schooling or that degree? Um, Later on, like when I retire, that's yeah. something. But I do all the events. If we have parties at home or families have parties, I'm the one that decorates and do all mm. that. So. I still be able, I'm still using my degree, yeah. just not as the owner. I just yeah. do it for enjoyment. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, so, like, how big is your immediate? You got how many brothers and sisters? And it's three of us. But my, like I said, my sister and I are married to first cousins, so she has four, and then I have six, and then my brother has three. So. Okay. But I have thirty-one cousins, and thirty of us are born in January. So, <laughs> so, yeah. so starting from January 1st to January 31st, there's a birthday almost every day. 
Yeah. So, and when we were growing up, we had one big sheet cake that just said "Happy Birthday." <laughs> <laughs> so, so that, yeah. yeah. And then my oh. husband's the only child, but I'm my father, my dad's only child, oh. and then my husband's the only child. Period. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, but now it's just expanded. <laughs> no expanded. More. Yeah, because we, we have six children, but then we did foster care. We have adopted children, yeah. but we don't single out. We just we have ch- they all are our children. We have yeah. bonus children, yeah. and then we have bonus grandchildren. So, uh-huh. but when I refer to them, they all my grandchildren. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's so sweet. So, are any of the other ones kind of a little jealous that? Uh, Lola Ann got that whole time of e-learning with you? No, because their parents was able to work from home or okay. they had, you know, other support. Her mom didn't have anyone but us. So, yeah. and it was just fortunate I was able to take her on the road with, oh. at that time. So, yeah. yeah, and it was rewarding because she got to see different states and see how, you know, people live and the struggles that everyone's going through and how blessed we are. And you can't take mm-hmm. anything for granted. So even going to the White House, hearing them speak and seeing what they're trying to do for the trucking industry, regardless of what side of the you know political aisle they're on, yeah. you have to respect that somebody's really looking, trying to look out for us mm-hmm. and hearing us and not yeah. just saying it because it's an off season. And that's how I felt when he's like, oh, reach out to me if you have any questions. Like, oh, OK, you will probably talk to me when it's time to start running again, you know, for the, when they start running for president or uh-huh. reelection. So it was rewarding to see it's, mm-hmm. it's an off season. And like I said, nobody ever asked, even when we was at the White House and they found out that I'm an independent. It, they personality or the conversation never changed. It was, mm-hmm. they was, you know, it was like, oh, okay, <laughs> yeah, and keep going. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, did you have any anything else to add? Or? No, I just I'm just thankful, if, you know, for News Bomb and Mitch, you know, thank you so <laughs> highly of me and allow uh-huh. me to even do the ride along and you know represent News Bomb in the trucking industry yeah. on such a you know political um, platform and giving me that opportunity. Yeah. It's rewarding. And to see that the things that I brought up that are being heard mm-hmm. and, you know, it's nothing, you know, built like they said, Rome wasn't built over a day. Yeah. So the ch- challenges in trucking is not going to be resolved with yeah. one administration or overnight. Yeah. It's a, but it's a stepping st- stone, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I appreciate the seed. Yeah. Something yeah. being done. So now you're not nervous when Mitch calls. You might be another adventure. Oh, they might still go to voicemail for me. <laughs> I, have to, I have to just be, depends. I have to reflect. I always look at my scorecard and say, okay, do I have any event? No. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah oh, I get yeah. that feeling. Yeah. It's like if someone texts you, like, can we talk? And yeah. you're like, oh, no. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I don't know. Can I? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah so, well, yeah. thank you so much for your time, Lula. Oh, you're welcome. And, um, yeah, so glad to have you here. Thank so. you. And I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. You've been listening to Terminal Exchange, the official podcast show of New Spam Transportation. New Spam is an industry leader in over the road freight transportation. For more information on New Spam's award winning truckload services and top paying driving careers, go to newspam.com or newspamjobs.com. Thanks for listening to this episode of Terminal Exchange. New episodes arrive every Tuesday, so be sure to subscribe to our show wherever you listen to podcasts and share a little love by writing us a review. Then, go deeper into each exchange or listen to previous episodes at our podcast page, TerminalExchange.org.